So far, I've been working with a tile map uh, that uses simple, regular hexagons. So it's a it's a top-down hexagon approach um, because it's it's straightforward to use. Um, but the kind of aesthetic that I really like is um, what's used in the in the later uh, Civilization games and some others. Um, where the hexagons are isometric and they're also angled. So, so I call this the angled isometric sort of uh, hex layout. Um, now, I don't know how simple um, it would be to actually use that, so I thought I'd give it a try and uh, see if I can implement it using Godot uh, version 4 that I'm using here. Um, so this is the, the current layout that I'm using, so regular uh, hexagons. Um, and I created then a new tile map over here. Um, we are playing around with the settings to, to generate the, the angled isometric layout. And if you look over here, the settings for the two are, are the same for the most part. So it's a hexagon map and it has certain sort of uh, properties over here and certain tile sizes. Um, and the only properties that, properties that I had to change to achieve this look are rotation and skew. Um, so if I reset these, um, so that gives us the, the regular top-down uh, hex styles. Um, now I think that rotation is pretty obvious as to as to what it does and how it works. Um, so all I had to do here was replace the this kind of orientation where the side is at the bottom um, by rotating it so that the corner or one of the corners is at the bottom. Um, and then it's just a matter of playing around with the skew property to to achieve the right angle. So this is the kind of layout I was looking for. Um, so I rounded that off to 25 degrees. And there's the angled isometric hex map. Unfortunately, uh, the end result is not quite what I was hoping for. Um, so this is how it looks. So it's not just the tile outline that is rotated and skewed. Um, the same is done to all the sprites within the tile. Um, so the terrain is kind of rotated and, and flat and, and stretched. And the same is true for the unit um, sprite. Um, now, I suppose there are some games that would want this kind of aesthetic, this kind of effect, but I can't imagine um, any any kind of game mode that I, that I do wanting to look like this. So I'm really struggling to think of any use case that would want to use the skew property the way it works now. Um, so I did some more searching to see if there is some other way for Godot 4 to, um, to produce the angled isometric aesthetic. Um, uh, and I found this post uh, on Reddit. So this is from another Godot developer. Um, now, he's not using hexagons, he's using squares, but they're angled squares, so he, he calls them diamonds. Um, and he had the same, and he had the same uh, issue that I did, um, in that he wasn't able to produce the, the angled effect he wanted without stretching the, the sprites themselves. Um, now, he did use Godot 3 before switching to Godot 4. Um, and in Godot 3, he was able to uh, produce the kind of layout he wanted. So I thought, okay, uh, maybe I should install Godot 3 and, and uh, play around with it and see if I can get my angled isometric uh, map to work there. So I did. Um, so this is the Godot 3 installation. Now, in Godot 3, the tile map uh, works very differently. So there is no hex option here at all. I had to, had to uh, end up using the custom option. Um, and here, the angular symmetric look is achieved through the custom transform. So Godot 3 doesn't start, so the time map here doesn't start with regular hexagons and then convert them into, into the kind of look I'm, I'm trying to achieve. Uh, it expects the programmer to create that look outside of Godot and then import it here into the time map. So what I had to do, um, I had to create this kind of hexagon uh, orientation um, and then import that into Godot. Um, and then it's a matter of stringing those tiles together into a grid. Now, 
I didn't know what custom transform was or how it worked. Uh, so after a bit of searching, I found this post here. Um, I will link it uh, in the description of, uh, of this video, um, which uses some straightforward examples to, to explain sort of how the custom transform works, which I found easy to follow. Um, so briefly, um, there are three pairs of X and Y coordinates. Um, the first pair um, defines the translation along the X axis. The second pair defines translation along the Y axis and the third pair defines the origin, um, which I don't have any use for in this particular exercise. So I'll just lift it unchanged. Uh, okay, so what does that mean or how does it work? So if we take this hexagon uh, orientation um, and string it together into a grid, um, which I'm not sure if it will come out clearly in the video, so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just sort of highlight these sides um, to make it easier to see. Uh, so if we take this hexagon as the, as the starting hexagon, um, then I've chosen this direction as the x-axis and I've chosen this direction as the y-axis. So this hexagon is the next hexagon along the x-axis and this is the next hexagon along the y-axis. And then the question becomes how much do the x and y coordinates have to change to move to the next hexagon along each axis? Um, so if I change the color here and I pick one of the corners, so let's say I pick this point over here. Um, how much do the x and y coordinates have to change to take us to the corresponding point on the next hexagon along the x-axis and the same for the y-axis? Now, um, I've captured these uh, coordinates in a spreadsheet. So this here is our starting point, the reference point. Um, this here is the next point um, along the x-axis, and this here is that point along the y-axis. Um, and then the change in, in coordinates is just the difference between the, the end point and the starting point. So we take these values and we subtract the starting point values from it and this is what we end up with. And the same for the y-axis. So this is the end point on the y-axis and this is the starting point that we subtract from it and we end up with these values. Um, so these values are what we use for the custom transform here. Um, and then the cell size is 1529 by 889 which is just the size of a single hexagon here. So 1529 by 889. Um, and that's it. That's all the settings that we need to uh, combine these individual uh, cells into a grid. So when I run this, this is what it gives me. So it's the angle asymmetric look that I'm looking for, but the terrain is upright. It's not stretched, it's not skewed, rotated, any of that. Um, and if I add, um, let's say, unit sprites, they're upright as well. So this is exactly the, the aesthetic that I'm looking for. Um, now, I don't really want to switch from good 4 to good 3 because I started in good 4 and I really like some of its features. Um, so I don't want to kind of downgrade to an earlier version of, of the game engine. Um, so what I'm going to do... Um, for now at least, I'm going to stick with the simple top-down look that I've started with. And then hopefully, maybe in a year or two, um, this kind of functionality will be added to Godot 4, and then I'll be able to switch to this kind of layout uh, for my game later on. So here's to hoping.